Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. I'm very happy to be with you. That uh, thank you, Bank of Inapabu, for introducing me. Information was very old. Many things have changed. I have nothing to do with the UK anymore. I'm living already six, seven years in Belgium again. That uh, and uh, I'm not preaching there. Belfast. That was many years ago. One year after I've been there, the temple president. But I understood that's not nothing for me. <laughs> that uh, I did academic study and so on. Uh, but uh, that was. I, lo I lost a lot of time with that, so that, uh, that was a, also a big mistake I made. That, uh, and uh, service, yeah, I did some service in this college. Uh, I tried my best still to serve, although very unqualified. So for the VHG, Vrindavan Institute for Higher Education, I've been facilitating the Bhaktivedanta course for many years. And we have some graduates also, some from the United States, and one of them is Prabhupada Priya. And uh, I was responsible for guiding her to write her Bhaktivedanta thesis. And that's what I've printed out before me, our Bhaktivedanta thesis. We work together on it, a lot of communication and suggestions, and she followed most of my suggestions. And uh, it became a unique work. And uh, therefore, this her thesis is about the Yuga Dharma. And what's the Yuga Dharma? The chant of the holy name. That uh, so we will speak during today and during this weekend about the holy name. First is today we will speak about the characteristics of the holy name. And then we will speak about the origin of the holy name tomorrow morning. That. Uh, where does the holy name come from? That, uh, and then we will speak about who can chant the holy name. That, uh, and on Sunday we will hear what happens when you chant the holy name. That, uh, but then the last session will be how to chant the holy name. That's the most important. That uh, uh, this uh, this is half of the thesis, so I could give nine sessions, but uh, it's a little too short. Uh, my visit for that, and to give that in present in a weekend during a weekend. Yeah. I want also to present it in such a way that the newcomers in Krishna consciousness and the more advanced all have something to gain from hearing it that uh, but it's all by the mercy of Srila Prabhupada and Agarumaj and many devotees in Iskon who are guiding us that we can speak something that makes sense. It's by the mercy, therefore, we start the seminar by praying to Srila Prabhupada and the previous Acharyas. Omajana Timanda Syajan Sana Shaka Saksvan Militam Yinata Smaish Gurbaina Ma. Chichitanya manopistam stab tam yena butalis from a bukadamiam the datis fa pradantika. Vande hamsi yu si yuda padakam lamsi yum vaisna vamsa. 
Shiyupam Chagachatam Saganaragnatam Vitam Tam Sativa Satvaitam Savdutam Parjana Saitam Sikrishna Chitanya Deva Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sanganalita Sipishakam Vitam Sha He Krishna Kauna Sindhu Dina Bandha Jyatpate Kaupesha Kaupka Kanta Radha Kanta Dhamstate Tapta Kansna Gauranghi Radha Vinda Vanashvi Vishavana Sita Devi Panamama Haripiye Pankha Kalptu Visha Kripas Nabe Visha Patnam Pavani Bio Vaishna Bio Namo Nama Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Chiyadvait Hadada Shiva Sati Gaura Vakta Vinna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare Namo Vishnu Padai Krishna Pristaya Bhutali Shimate Bhakti Vedanta Svamiti Namine Namaste Sarasvata Deve Gaurvani Pacharani Nirvishesha Srinivavi Paskachai Desatarani Srila Prabhupada Ki So yes, there is an echo, I think. Many people in this world want to improve themselves in various ways, and that uh, they want to improve themselves through education. They want to improve their financial status, their social position, their physical fitness, their, their mental health, that uh, they do relations, relation counseling and so on. That, uh, but are they really improving themselves? That is a question. That uh, to improve our, ourselves, we have to know ourselves. That's very essential. Otherwise, we could be totally wasting our time. The essential question is, who am I? And Lord Krishna, by what he does, explains that to Arjun. Enos Menchotade Kaunam Sarpam We are the soul actually in this body. This body changes from quality of thought. That so we are a spirit soul, does a teaching of Bhagavad Gita. So since I'm the soul of a spirit soul, self-improvement means spiritual advancement making spiritual advancement. That, um, so if we look at the Vedic literature, the entire body of Vedic literature is to help to make everyone, to, to help everyone to make spiritual advancement. That, uh, but the Vedic scriptures are so so vast that uh, the Padma Purana, or the yeah, five hundred thousand verses. Yeah, it's uh, so it, uh, the Bhagavad Gita seventeen thousand verses. It's uh, the Mahabharata, Bharat, Mahabharat, I think three hundred thousand verses. It's, Simans. You, you need an entire life, lifetime. Even in an entire lifetime, you cannot read all that. And that uh, 5,000 years ago, this Kali Yuga started this Iron Age that. Uh, and the sages of Namasaranya, they wanted to know 
the essence of the Vedic scriptures to improve themselves because they didn't have time. Life is very short. They didn't, they wanted to know the essence that, uh, so yes, that therefore, Sanaka Rishi, who was the leader of the sages, he questioned Sutta Goswami. And he's asking in the beginning of the Bhagavatam, Burini, Buri, Karamani, Sutta, Vyana, Vibhagasa, Atasada, Tyayat, Sharam, Samudritya, Manishaya. Guri Badraya Bhutanam Yenatma Subhashidati. They say there are many varieties of scriptures, they say. And in all of them there are many prescribed duties which can be learned only after many years of study in the various divisions. Therefore, Sage, please select the essence of all scripture and explain it for the good of all living be beings that by such instructions, their heart may be fully satisfied. So they were asking for the essence of the instructions. Because Siddha Goswami will make that point in the beginning. Payanol payusa sabya kala vasmin jurejan shanaha. Yeah. In this speech of Kali, that, uh, that uh, everyone has short lives, that, uh, and everyone in this age is quarrelsome. You see, so many war wars, <laughs> quarrelsome. Lazy. Well, lazy in terms of self realization. The material things are not so lazy. For sensual. They are very good, but they are lazy for the real thing. They are misguided. And they are always upadutaha, always disturbed. Everyone is disturbed in this. So they are asking, Sutta Goswami, please, but give me, give us the essence of the scripture, the a process where, where, whereby we, we can improve ourselves spiritually. A process why we quickly can make spiritual advancement. That, uh, but Sutta Goswami understood this because there were many sages there and they were on different levels of advancement. And this age of Kali had begun and he wanted to help them. But in the beginning of the Bhagavatam, there immediately after being questioned, Questions questioned as such by Sana Karishi, the head of the sages. He immediately gave the best process for this age, said, Etan Yavit Yamana Namicha Tamakobo Akotobayam Yoganam Nepener Natam Hari Namah Kirtan. O King. Constant chanting of the holy name of the Lord after the way of great authorities is the doubtless and fearless way of success for all, including those who are free from material desires, those who are desire of material enjoyment, and those who are self-satisfied by dint of transcendental knowledge. Because see, there were different kinds of people. And he gave for everyone. There are those who want liberation, okay. There are those who want sense gratification, okay. <laughs> those who, who 
who, who, who wants go, to go back to the spiritual world. It, gave, it gives them the same process. Chant of the holy name. That. So that's the process for this age. And that is what this seminar is about. That, uh, hmm. So this is a process for, for everyone who wants to improve himself spiritually. That it's the, it's the best process, is the most powerful process, is the only process that really works. And this is confirmed. It is confirmed by Lord Chaitanya. Harinam, Harinam, Harinam eva kevam na kala nasteva, nasteva, nasteva katevat anyata. In this age of quarrel and hypocrisy, the only means of deliverance is a chant of the holy name of, of the Lord. There is no other way, there is no other way, there is no other way. So, which names of the Lord should we chant? Especially in Kali Yuga. This is meant in the Kali Santaran Upanishad. There it said, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Iti Sudasakam Nam Nam, Kali Kalmasi Nasanam, Natta Para Patara, Natta Para Taropaya, Sarvadvesha Drishati. The 16 names of the Hare Krishna mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, destroy all the inauspiciousness of the age of Kali. This is the conclusion of all the Vedas. But is the Kali Santara Upanishad the only source? No. It is said also in the Ananta Samhita. This is a long Sanskrit quote, but at the end, the Hare Krishna man mantra is mentioned, but I will read the translation. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. The 16 name. 32 syllable mantra is the ma mantra in the age of Kali by which all living beings can be delivered. One should never abandon chanting this ma mantra and take to other so called purificatory processes which are practiced by rascals or engage in chanting other metrical compositions of the name of Krishna that are against the pure conditions of the scriptures or are filled with rasabhas. About this divinely spiritual mantra which deliver one from material existence, the original guru, Lord Brahma, said, the Shrutis have declared this mantra to be the best means of deliverance in the age of Kali. Having all heard this from Brahma, the sons and disciples of Brahma, beginning with Narada, all accepted the mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And having meditated on it, attained perfection. So that is. But now, what is the holy name? Every person has a name. That uh, a single person may have different names that uh, may have given names, social media ideas, professional titles, 
and so on that uh, that Krishna Krishna is supreme person so he has unlimited forms he has unlimited qualities he has unlimited relationships and he has unlimited names so that uh, but it is mentioned in the scripture that uh, Krishna, the ultimate form of God is Krishna, is the form of Krishna. And the ultimate name is also Krishna. So it is said that thousand names of Vishnu equal are uh, equal to one name of Ram. And three names of Ram equal one name of Krishna. That uh, so how much more potent it is the name Krishna than the name Vishnu, who has counted 3,000 times, thank you. Yes, yes. That, uh, so now what, what is the meaning, what is the meaning of Krishna? The, of course, we should not interpret the holy name, but we can accept what the Shima Bhagavatam says about the holy name. It's 1064 29 in the Bhagavatam. Nasani <speaking> Brahma. <in Hebrew> Krishna it adibiyate. The word Krish is the, is the attractive feature of the Lord's existence. And na means spiritual pleasure. So when Krish is added to na, it becomes Krishna, which indicates the absolute truth. That's what the verse says. So Krishna is the most attractive. He's attracting us. And that, uh, because Krishna is the ocean of all rasa. That uh, in Prabhupada Translates the word rasa as transcendent or mellow. That, uh, that it's uh, an experience of spiritual emotion in our relationship with Krishna. That uh, because this rasa we taste when we try to please Krishna because Krishna and the soul have an eternal relationship and that's the eternal relationship we all want to love and be loved but that love if that is expressed in service to Krishna then we experience this rasa that uh, so this rasa is going to Bhagavad Dif a different experience than our relationships in this world. <laughs> that uh, rasa um, is eternal and full of ananda bliss, whereas material taste is temporary. 
is Chapala Sukha, the little pre material pleasure of sense gratification is very flickering. And Bhogatya, Some, sometimes we enjoy in this world so-called enjoyment, but mostly we are suffering. And a little period of enjoyment is not really enjoyment. It's factually the absence of suffering. But spiritual enjoyment is eternal enjoyment. It's ananda. And, and this rasa is experienced in our relationship with Krishna. That, uh, it's the nectar for which we are always anxious. But how to get that nectar? The answer is by chanting of the holy name. That, uh, yeah. So one can argue, uh, how can I de develop a relationship just by chanting the the name of Krishna, the names of Krishna. That, uh, yeah. So, of course, that will not work with an ordinary person. But Krishna is different. That uh, Krishna can have. Have a, we can have a relationship with one person, get in a conversation with one person, but not at the same time with another person. <laughs> Krishna expands himself and he can have unlimited relationships at the same time. But, So now this holy name, the characteristic is that the holy name is non different from Krishna himself. That uh, this is mentioned, this Gaunitaki, this, this is mentioned by Srila Haridas Taku in a conversation with with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Haridas Thakur said, Yai Krishna say nam ek ekatatvahai. Krishna is his name, he says. They are one and the same tatva, same truth. And he said, Nama nami bina naya. There is no difference between the name and the named. No difference. That, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. This is what Haridas Thakur says. <coughs> but what Haridas Thakur says is also in the scriptures. In the Padma Purana. Nama Shintamani Krishna Shetanya Rasa Vishraha Purna Sudha Nitya Mukto Binatva Nama Namino. The holy name of Krishna is transcendental blissful. That, uh, it bestows all spiritual benedictions for it is Krishna himself. Krishna, the reservoir of all pleasure. So Krishna's name is complete. And it is a form of all transcendental mellows. It is not a material name under any condition. And it is no less powerful than Krishna himself. Since Krishna's name is not contaminated by the material qualities, there is no question of its being involved with Maya. Krishna's name is always liberated and spiritual. It is never conditioned by the laws of material nature. 
This is because the name of Krishna and Krishna himself are identical. That, uh, mm. So this is also confirmed in the Bible. So if if we chant Krishna's name, it means we are chanting Krishna's holy name, and that will invoke the presence. That, uh, so yes, that uh, also this is Lord Narayan speaking to Lord to Narada Muni. That uh, he says. Naham tishtam pai kunte yoginam rida yesu ya tatras tishtam in arada yatra kayanti mat bhakta. My dear Narada, actually, I do, I, do, I do not reside in my abode, Pai kunta. Nor do I reside in the hearts of the yogis. But I reside in that place where my, where my pure devotees chant my holy name and discuss my form, pastimes, and qualities. The Srila Prabhupada writes in, in a purport of, in the Bhagavatam, 10 to 36 purport. Since the Lord is absolute, there is no difference between his name and his actual form. In the material world, there is a difference between the form and the name. And then it says, the mango fruit, if we chant mango, 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 will you taste the mango? No. That uh, the name and and the mango, the name of the mango and the mango is different. That, uh, the, the holy name has an irres irre irresistible sweetness. That, uh, and therefore we can chant it for hours every day. Prabhupada said in a lecture, you can try to chant Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola. Soon you will be discussed. That, uh, yes. Hmm. So, yes. Mm -hmm. So, it is said in Shaitanya Shaitamrita, Kali Kali Nama Rupa Krishna Avatar Nami Haiti Oi Sarva Charat Nistar. In this age of Kali, the holy name of the Lord, the Hare Krishna Mantra, is the incarnation of Lord Krishna. Simply by chanting the holy name, one associates with the Lord directly. Anyone who does this is certainly delivered. That. Hmm. And of course, there are many verses in the Bible down who state that the holy name is Krishna. That uh, so this is here verse from the Bible down. Tamla Shyamala Fisi. Si asoda stanandaye. Krishna nama rudi iti sarva sastra vinirnaya. The only purpose of the holy name of Krishna is that he is dark blue like a Tamil tree and he is the son of Mother Yasoda. That is the conclusions of the revealed scriptures. <laughs> so, 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 like Krishna is all attractive. Is Holy name is all attractive. That, uh, so we know that Srila Prabhupada in 1966, he started to chant in Tom, Tom, Tomskin Square. 
And that was the beginning, really, of the Sankirtan movement. It's chanting. Tomkin Square Park, that, uh, and what happened there? Is a dis beautiful description in the Prabhupada Vinamrita. What happened when Srila Prabhupada started to chant in the in Tomkin Square Park? That uh, so I will read that excerpt. So, Srila Prabhupada had sent devotees ahead to start the kirtan. And now one of the girls had come running back to him, ex ex excitedly knocking on his door and announcing, Swamiji, there are so many people. Prabhupada could hear the chanting, the kirtals, and the booming of the timpani. And he entered the meadow, he saw a sloping hill dotted with hundreds of young people sitting, lying, lounging, smoking, throwing frisbees, or walking around. And in the meadow below the hill was Iskirta. Many passers, passers by had stopped and, when, and were listening in a group about 200 feet from the Kirtan. That, uh, uh, this is a description of what happened in San Francisco, but uh, not in Tomskins Square Park, San Francisco. So many passerby had stopped and were listening in a group about 200 feet from the Kirtan. Closer, closer in, about 50 feet from the Kirtan was another group, listening more intently. And then there was the Kirtan party itself, Prabhupada's disciples and dozens of young hippies sitting tightly together and chanting, and others were standing nearby, clapping and swaying to the rhythm of the drum and the kirtals. Some of the devotees danced with arms upraised against the background of uninterrupted blue sky. Others placed, played instruments. The cartels and timpani were, were there. Hayagriva had brought, had brought his cornet. And there were other instruments brought by the devotees and the hippies. Little children were taking part. Even a stray dog uh, pranced in the in innermost circle of the Kirtan party. On Sundays, the meadow beneath Hippie Hill was always an open show. And today, the kirtan was a featured attraction. Prabhupada joined the kirtan, walking up suddenly to the surprise and the light of the devotees. He sat down and began playing the bridanga and leading the singing in a loud voice. As soon as he sat down, some young children had gathered in close to him. He had smiled at them, deftly playing the, the Mridanga and trailing and entertaining them with his playing. After an hour of chanting, Prabhupada stopped the kirtan and addressed the crowd. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. This is the sound vibration, and it is to be understood that the sound vibration is transcendental. And because it is transcendental vibration, therefore it appeals to everyone, even without understanding the language of the sound. This is the beauty. Even children respond to it. So after speaking five minutes, Prabhupada became the kirtan again. One woman with long uncombed red hair began dancing back and forth and chanting her baby in her arms. A man and woman sitting side by side uh, played together on the heads of a pair of bongos. Subal in tight corduroy pants and a flowing white shirt danced in a semblance of the step Swamiji had shown in. Although Subal looked somewhat like an American Indian, looked like an American Indian dancer, 
a little girl, no more than four years, sat cross-legged, playing cartels and chanting seriously. A suave-looking fellow wearing a vest and round sunglasses played castan castanets against his palm. Ravinda Sfarup sat rocking back and forth as he played the drone on the, on the harmonium. Beside him, Ayriva chanted forcefully, his head and upper body lunging forward and back, his long hair and beard jutting out wildly, while nearby a girl stood with her right arm around one boy and her left arm around another. All three of them swaying back and forth, singing with peaceful, blissful smiles, enjoying the chanting and the sunshine. One girl sat silently meditating, while beside her a girl danced provocatively, and a five-year-old beside the, chan the dancing girl played with two balloons. As Sheila Baba surveyed the activities in the middle, he seemed deeply pleased to see the ring of dancers singing all around him, chanting Hare Krishna. Although the enthusiasm of these hippies was often wild and sensual, and the gathering assumed a wholesome sweetness due to the chanting of Hare Krishna. For Swamiji, the main thing was the chanting was going on and on, dressed in a saffron cloth that seemed to change colors subtly. Subtly, in the fading afternoon sunlight, he watched in a kind, in a kindly fatherly way, not imposing any restraint, but simply inviting everyone to chant Hare Krishna. The twenty-five-year-old cat was walking in the park when she heard the sound of the kirtan in the crowd of of hundreds of people gathering around the scene. Linda found it, found it easily, easy to go close without becoming conspicuous. She felt comfortable watching and, and even thought of joining the fun. The kirtan in the park was the most beautiful sight Linda had ever seen. The dancers were swaying back and forth, their arms were raised against the open sky, and in the middle of the dance was a dark, gray-haired, wise person sitting and chanting. As she moved in closer, she began to sway with the devotees. Then she sat down and started chanting, wanting to find out what, what was going on. After more than an hour of chanting, the elderly leader finally stopped the kirtan, and Linda began talking to some of the devotees. Although the Swami had slipped away, some of his followers had remained, handling out flyers and invitations to the Sunday love feast and picking up the timpani and the flags. One of them asked her to come to come with them to the temple. Anyway, that uh, so that is certainly an uh, great characteristic of Lord Krishna is all attractive and his holy name is attractive. It's full of sweet sweetness. His holy name is full of sweetness. But not only that, the holy name is only also the embodiment of Vedic knowledge. That uh, so this is confirmed also in the Bhagavatam. If, if Krishna is pleased when we chant his holy name, he gives us a realized transcendental knowledge to the heart. That uh, so in the Bhagavatam one five thirty five, these are the realizations of. Um Srila Vyasadev. Yatatra Kyate Kama Bhagavata Paitoshanam Kyanam Yatat Adinam He Bhakti Yoga Samam Bitam. Whatever work is done, 
But whatever work is done here in this life for the satisfaction of the mission of the Lord is called Bhakti Yoga, or transcendental loving service to the Lord. And what is call, called knowledge becomes a concomitant factor. So real knowledge comes from pleasing the Supreme Lord by service. And we will hear later that uh, chanting Hare Krishna, we should do it in a service mood to please Krishna. That uh, that's, we will see that in the last session, how to chant the audience. Very important. Session. That, uh, so how does Vedic knowledge becomes revealed to us? That uh, Krishna explains in Bhagavad Gita, there is some sort of number to one, it overcome the Dami Buddha or Tamni Yenama. So if it, if I we serve him with a little love, then Krishna gives us the understanding by which we can come to him. That and how does he give that? They shall ever go to the mamma, can jump to the mamma, to jump up, of our bestow, and to be a wash for that. To show them special mercy, I dwell in the heart. I destroy with the lamp of knowledge all the heat. That. Why is that? Because it's Krishna consciousness. Krishna consciousness is the pure consciousness of the soul. It is in the soul. It is in us. But it's now covered by layers and layers of lust, anger, greed, madness, illusion, envy, which is ignorance. And Krishna removes that ignorance and then it becomes revealed. But it's already there. That, um, so when one chants devotionally, that is with what was it, what does it mean chanting devotionally? It means with pure intention. With pure intention, it means avoiding the ten offenses. That uh, then Krishna is pleased and he illuminates the heart with transcendental knowledge. And thus Krishna, Krishna's mercy, which he bestows of one who sincerely chants the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. That uh, so Srila Prabhupada writes in a purport of this verse of Bhagavad Gita. When Sitchitaya Mahaprabhu was in Benares prom promulgating the chanting of the Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Thousands of people were following him. Pakistananda Sarasvati, a very influential and learned scholar in Benares at that time, derided Sichitanya Mahaprabhu for being a sen sentimentalist. Sometimes Mayavadi philosophers criticize the devotees because they think that most of the devotees are in the darkness of ignorance and are philosophically naive sentimentalists. Actually, that's not a fact. They are very, very learned scholars, Srila Prabhupada says, who have put forward the philosophy of devotion. They are so that uh, but even if a devotee does not take advantage advantage of their literatures of his spiritual master, if he's sincere in his devotional service, he is helped by Krishna himself within his heart. So the sincere devotee engaged in Krishna consciousness cannot be without knowledge. The only qualification is that one carry out devotional service in full consciousness. 
So one may ask us, yes, Krishna says, Tesham Satyuktam Vachnam Kita Bhubhikam Tadami Bhutiyom Tam Yena Pam Yena Mamu Vyam Tite says, if one serves me with a little love, I give you this transcendental knowledge, that this realized transcendental knowledge. But our problem is, we don't have this critical become, this little love ill. We are. Because, yes, but Krishna made special arrangement. He said that we never have a partner, but I have a question. See, we have protection to take him down and start the production. A positive spiritual master and serve him and with humility and ask questions. So, Krishna made arrangement if we follow the instructions of the spiritual master, who is the spiritual master, who is his representative, if we follow his instructions. Prabhupada gave us instructions, you chant 16 rounds that uh, all the regulated firms are supposed to do service. Hear the Bhagavatam. If we follow these instructions, Krishna accepted us a little law. And he gives us realization. And the, the main instruction is chanting this holy name that uh, So it is set in the Brahmanda Purana. Brahmanda Purana is another source where the Hare Krishna Mahamantra is mentioned in many scriptures mentioned. Nam Sankirtan Deva Tarakam Brahma Drishyate Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare The Nam Sankirtan con congregational chanting of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, delivers a complete revelation of all spiritual reality. That, uh, yes. Hmm. So if we chant this holy name under the guidance of the spiritual master, and the spiritual master instructs us to chant without offenses. Then all this will happen. That uh, because the holy name is unlimitedly, unlimitedly potent. Namna Makari Bhagdaniya Sarva Sakti. Lord Chaitanya said, Lord Krishna has invested all his powers in this holy name that uh, that yes so but when we but these powers are not manifested to us unless unless we follow the instructions of the spiritual master Otherwise, when we chant the holy name, it will also have an effect, but limited. That the holy, why is that? It's nothing to do with the holy name. The holy name is fully potent. But we are covered by ignorance. That's the problem. When you have the sun, the sun is fully potent. The sun is there now. But the earth is in between, covered. <laughs> and many times during the day there is there are clouds, but still the sun is there. But we don't see it because there are clouds between. You see these clouds have to be removed. So she to Darpanamarit's now or she yes. We have to remove the dust from the mirror. That uh, so, Krishna, Krishna's holy name will respond to us when we follow the process that Krishna has given us. That, uh, 
which includes taking shelter of a bona fide spiritual master, inquire from, from the spiritual master, and follow the spiritual master's instructions with faith. And that, uh, that, that factually, the holy name is the supreme goal. But it's only revealed to us. Krishna reveals to the heart. It's in our heart. And he reveals to us when we are properly chanting his holy name. That uh, because the holy name is has all knowledge and has all potent potencies, has all love. The holy name is Krishna himself. The holy name can give us bliss. That uh, And the holy name is always there for us. It's present. It's just waiting on this until we are submissively and sincerely approach. So, but that requires the learning of the art, how to chant. That we will discuss later. So, tomorrow morning we will speak about the origin of the holy name. That, uh, so, any questions? Yes, please. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. Sometimes we chant it as Hare Ram, and sometimes we chant it as Hare Rama. Is there any particular time when we should be doing Ram? Ram? Or is it reverence or what? Well, it is best, of course, whether you say Rama or Ram, that. Uh, Whatever the, the the holy name will act. That doesn't make a difference. The pronunciation is not uh, the correct pr pr pronunciation. Even if we don't pronounce it correctly, it will act. But nevertheless, there is a proper uh, pronunciation. That uh, I attended Sanskrit classes of Nityananda Prabhu, South India, and it, it taught us that it's because I'm not good in pronouncing, but I can try that it's Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, and Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama, Rama, Hari Hari. So it's not Rama, it's, it's Rama, it's shorter. That, uh, but that's the correct Sanskrit pronunciation. But yeah, when we chant Hare Krishna, then uh, in congregational chanting together, we may chant different results, the Bengali pronunciation, and rather the Chinese who cannot pronounce R, it's Hare Krishna. <laughs> and I, I cannot, uh, that uh, or, or, or the French would say Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. So it's different, but uh, that doesn't matter, it's still will act. If we, we will learn that in the next days, if we pronounce other Vedic mantras, they must be pronounced correctly to get the effect. But the Hare Krishna mantra is so potent that because it's Krishna himself, that uh, it doesn't matter. What matters in our chanting is our proper motive in chanting giving up these offenses, which is open, and we will discuss about that. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, 
approach. In the beginning, we spoke about the approach. Sufi Goswami recommends Haridam or Kirtan and the constant chanting of the holy name for anyone, uh, you said, even for people who are aspiring for better material condition. Yeah. So, does it uh, does it mean that everyone gets the ultimate benefit of chanting and takes it up, even if they don't have a pure intention? At some point in time, will they achieve the highest uh, achievement? That we will discuss a little further the eligibility for chanting the holy name. Everyone can chant the holy name. That, uh, but the ch chanting the holy name finally will purify you and bring you to the right motivation. But uh, it we have, if we make offenses, it may take many births. That, uh, that's, that's mentioned, I think. There be, because we, we sing every, every, every morning the 10 offenses, right? Yes. That, uh, so, Bhaujan Makariya Dishravana Kirtana. Tabutaya Paya Krishna Pradi Primadam. If one is infested with the ten offenses in the chant of the Hare Krishna Mantra, despite his endeavor to chant the holy name for many births, will not get love of God that that is the ultimate goal of the chanting. So the holy name is also Shintamani, it's fulfilling all the desires. And we will see that example a little further through from Maharaj. It was also chanting the holy name, the different holy names. Yeah. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Vasudevaya. This Krishna, he was taken by Narada Muni in chanting the holy name. And he had a complete wrong motivation. He wanted a kingdom greater than his great grandfather. But finally, when he came before um, Krishna Garba Vishnu, then uh, he said, I, I don't want it anymore. I have now something better. This uh, love of God that which he was tasting. <laughs> Ex ecstasy at every moment. I don't want it anymore. But uh, Lord Vishnu said, yes, okay, you don't want it anymore. That, uh, but you desired it. So now you can rule for 30,000, 32,000 years or something, the, the entire universe, and then I will give you something better. I give you the pole star and the Guruva Loka, the spiritual planet in this universe. So, so we have to be careful when we chant with our desires, with, our, with, with desires, because Krishna will fulfill them. Also, Bali Maharaj. Bali Maharaj wanted to become Indra. But so he, he, on the strength of Sukacharya, he could conquer the heavenly planet. And he, and then, but then he was thrown out by Vamandev. <laughs> that, uh, and, uh, but then, we know he surrendered to Van Vamandev and Vanambe, Vamandev gave him a benediction to go to the Sutta planet, uh, a, a very, which was better than the heavenly planets, more comfort than that, uh, and he would become his doorkeeper. But, but he said to Bali Maharaj, you want to become Indra? In the next month on that, that's a uh, you will become Indra. So you have to become Indra because they desire it. So you have to be careful if we if we chant with material motivations, Krishna will fulfill things. That but of course if we are sincerely chant for wanting to become pure, really, following the the instructions of the spiritual master to give 
and and pew means giving up this ten offenses. The ten offense uh, it's, it's remaining attached even after receiving Sonia's and understanding Sonia instructions. That uh, so we have to give up the uh, if, if that's our desire to give that up, Krishna will not fulfill his desires if we follow these ten offenses properly. Then we come to Anya Bilasta Sinyam Gana Kamapana on the clear the Krishna Sinam Bhakti. Then we have right motivation. No material motives. We just want to please Krishna out of love. And then, so that's, that's the importance of these 10 offenses. We will also see that. But it, it doesn't matter because in, in the second canto of the Bhagavatama, there also um, Siddha Goswami said, I come so I come from Moksaka. Sukadev Goswami says, I come so I come from Moksaka, Mudarati, Tivaina Bhaktiyona. Tivaina Bhaktiyona, Chivate. So he says, yes, but we are full of material desires. I have no material desires or desire of liberation. It doesn't matter. You perform Tivaina Bhaktiyona. You perform this devotion service with great force and it will purify you. But therefore it must be done under the guidance of the spiritual master and and, and, and in combination with hearing the Bible of mercy. Because that brings us in the right mood, the right approach to chant That uh, so there's, we will hear there are no rules for chanting, no hard rules, but there are recommendations for chant, for how to chant, to obtain the highest result. And, uh, these two things are there. Mm -hmm. Does that help? Yeah. Yes, go I was wondering, I got a statement and a question. The statement is that I've heard that Asian countries, they, they can't pronounce the R on Rama and I Lama. So the benefit's got to be there for, for them as well if they can't physically do it. And the question is, how can one get spiritual benefit if he's not able to talk? It's because Krishna is in the heart. Krishna is in the holy name. He's in the heart. He knows the intention of the person to chant his name. He knows it. So this false pronunciation, it doesn't matter. But that does not mean that one can invent the holy name of something. No one has to, uh, to chant according to the authorities who chant what we say to chant the Hare Krishna mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So one must follow the authorities and chant under their guidance. And then the motivation for the mantra comes from the heart. That is the motivation for the mantra, what's in the heart. The, the right motivation is Anya Bilasa Sunam Kyanaka Matanavatam Anakulina Krishna Sil Nambaktu Tama. Yes. Anya Sil Anya Vilasa Sunyam. There, there should be no other desires than to please Krishna favorably. No desires for material sense gratification, no material, no desire for, for liberation, not nothing for oneself, only pleasing Krishna out of love. And that's the only pure motivation that, uh, yeah, okay. Good, something else. Okay, then propose that. Uh, we finish with ch chanting a uh, few minutes of holy name and finishing your prayers. So thank you. Hare Krishna.
Thank you. 